Good evening, Lord of Life, and welcome to worship. I am Deacon Kenny Champagne, and it is a joy to be in this space with you all this evening, um, worshiping with you all. If you are a guest or a first-time visitor with us um, exploring this space, you are a blessing to us. And of course, if you have been worshiping with us here, um, whether it be Wednesday nights or Sundays for a long time, uh, you also bless us in this space with your presence. And um, It's just wonderful to, to be here and to worship together. Um, if you feel so called uh, throughout worship at some point to um, join us in mission and ministry through your tithes and offerings, uh, at the end of worship there'll be um, information on ways in which you can give uh, and get involved at Lord of Life, and we encourage you to do so if you feel so moved and called during this space. Um, other than that, we will take a few deep breaths and we'll get into our time of worship here after a long week and a long couple of weeks um, and a long year that came before that. Uh, so this be, let this be space for us to just dwell together in the word and in song um, and in community. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your people here. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your creation, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now I invite you to sing with me, Live Christ. things 
along our way. All these things do today. All these things along your way. Tonight's reading comes from the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, verses 21 to 28. You are exalted, Lord Most High. Christ be exalted in this humble place. Jesus and his companions went to the town of Capernaum. When the Sabbath day came, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. Suddenly, a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an unclean spirit cried out, Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus reprimanded him. Be quiet, come out of the man, he ordered. At that, the unclean spirit screamed, threw the man into convulsion, and then came out of him. Amazement gripped the audience, and they began to discuss what had happened. What sort of teaching, it, new teaching is this? They asked excitedly. Is, it has such authority. Even evil spirits and unclean spirits obey his orders. The news about Jesus quickly spread throughout the re entire region of Galilee. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. So Mark throws us right into the action right away in chapter one with Jesus um, coming face to face with an unclean spirit, right? And the authority of Jesus being um, shown and demonstrated as as the, the people in the synagogue right off the bat hearing Jesus speak and teach, realizing that that he is doing so with a different type of authority. And then the unclean spirit. And the interesting thing here is how quickly Jesus cuts off the spirit from speaking. And that's because in in ancient times, the one who who spoke the name was the one who claimed authority over that person. And so, so we have Jesus cutting off the unclean spirit before they could say who Jesus was. And Jesus demonstrates his authority over that, not just by call, but by calling out the spirit and the spirit leaving the body of the man. And of course, the crowds just in amazement, again, reflecting on the authority that Jesus has. And I think it's, it's interesting because here in these past few weeks, we've We've seen many who claim the name and speak claim to speak for Jesus. We saw it in people storming the Capitol building with flags that said Jesus on them or had the cross on them. We saw it in the inauguration just a week ago with beautiful prayers and poetry and songs. We see it all the time. There's so many people that claim to speak for Jesus. And so it's hard sometimes to, to shuffle out and figure out who is the right person to be following. But ultimately, you know it's grounded in, in God by what happens to the people around the situation. Our bodies healed, our people blessed, our minds cleared, our people set free from sin and brokenness is, are they liberated? Is justice found? These are all the markers of Christ. So if the things that we follow, the people that we follow, don't bring us towards that or don't bring others towards that, if the people around them aren't doing those types of things and leading to those types of things, then we have to pause and wonder what's really going on here who are we who are we following who are we claiming to have authority over the name of Jesus and i'll be honest with you on on both sides these past weeks it gets me a little uneasy 
seeing both sides claiming Jesus. Too often we talk about um, keeping politics out of our religion and the separation of that. Honestly, my bigger concern that gets me uncomfortable is the way that religion is used in politics. I'd like to keep my religion out of your politics, is how I would like to say it. We have so many people that are claiming the name Jesus, claiming to be followers of Christ, but ultimately, do these people bring us to new life? Do they clear minds, liberate people? Sure, we have politicians that do great things, but we have to be really careful because it's easy to begin to follow some leader, some authority figure, and and get latched onto them thinking that they are leading us towards that. And then very easily, that person, that figure, that party, whatever it is, can easily become our God. The thing that, that we give our lives to. But no matter how much an authority figure claims the name of Christ, no matter how much a leader claims to be leading us towards, um, towards peace and love and care for one another and the liberation of those enslaved by sin and brokenness, none of them can bring us to new life. None of them can bring us the salvation that Christ brings to us. And so we have to be cautious of who we claim to have authority, the type of authority that Jesus has, that, that the crowds pointed to and said he has that authority, and that the crowds witnessed as the, the evil spirits, the unclean spirits, were called out of the man, and the man's mind was cleared, and he was healed, and he was saved, he was given new life, with the authority of Christ. And so as we head into these early weeks of a new government transition of power, as we continue to fight for allegiances to one side or the other and struggle as a nation and as people, what do we follow As Christians, we follow Christ. We keep our eye on the God of salvation, the God who sacrificed himself on the cross and the God who, dis who defeated death and was raised up, the God who brought new life, not just for, for him, but for us. The one who heals, the one who comes to those who are in need. And so we, we see and we give authority to Jesus. And we do what we can to, to listen and discern, to follow leaders here on this side of the creation that we believe will lead us in that direction. But if we're going to trust our life to something, our life, should be trust should be given to Jesus. We should trust our life with the authority that Jesus brings because of the healing and the peace, the shalom that Jesus brings with the new life. So now let's sing together the canticle of the turning, which I love this song. If you listen to the words, um, talks about just that, the shift in the world of God's kingdom coming, the world turning, and all of the things that try to claim the authority of Christ, that try to claim our attention and, and drag us down the world's paths. God comes and flips it all on its head, turns the world upside down for God's kingdom, for new life, for all of creation. Let's sing together. So 
soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame, and to those who were for you, you will show your might, put the strong to the fight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away our tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left unstone. Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more, for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away our tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to burn. Though the nations rage from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the darker's crushing grasp. This saving word that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away our tears for the dawn draws near, the world is about to And now let us pray together. We give you thanks. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have this day so graciously protected us. And we ask you to forgive us all our sins and the wrong which we have done. And by your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. Into your hands we commend our bodies and souls and all that is ours. Let let your holy angels have charge concerning us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. And now together let uh, remember us in your kingdom, Lord, as we pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. The Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord makes his face to shine on you, and he is gracious unto you. The Lord looks upon you with every favor, and he gives you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Church, it was great to worship with you this evening. Uh, may God bless you and keep you in his peace in the evening and the days to come. Peace be with you. Mm -hmm.